What's going on guys? We got the Taurus back. Time to do some more work on it. Got a complaint of a little FUD noise you hear uh, kind of when you're going in and out of the driveway. Uh, driving at low speed, so we're going to dive in and see what's going on with it. But before we do all that, hit the like, subscribe button. Uh, if you own a Taurus, I do a lot of repairs to this thing, believe it or not. So maybe it'll help you out. And before jacking up, don't forget, press the e-brake, chalk the back tires. This is a front wheel drive, so those rear tires will just move back and forth as need be. So we got it all jacked up. It's on jack stands. Uh, if you've seen my other video on this car, you'll know where the jack points are. But if not, this cross member right here, it ties from frame rail to frame rail. Easy way to lift up the car. And then you got the factory pinch wells right behind the front tire. Uh, that's where they recommend to lift it up with the factory jack, so definitely strong enough to hold the vehicle. So now I got the car on the jack stands. I put a jack under the control arm, kind of take some of the pressure off the suspension. Look for things that are moving that shouldn't be moving. Uh, looking for play and stuff, you know, kind of figure to be a bushing. Everything so far looks good under here, so we're going to kind of move to the outside of the wheel. All right, with the suspension still compressed, uh, we're going to wiggle the wheel around, kind of check for either a bad uh, wheel bearing, bad ball joints, bad tie rod. Um, you really want to do it with suspension compressed because if not, uh, it's, everything's going to be stretched out and pretty much have tension. So anything that's loose is pretty much going to have tension on it already. So it's not really going to want to move. Uh, as far as like ball joints go, you can wiggle up and down, which has really tight. A wheel bearing also will give uh, some indication uh, of wiggle up and down, but it'll also give wiggle left and right too. So that's the easy way to check the difference between a ball joint and a wheel bearing. So uh, tie rods, wiggle them back and forth which you can see right there, we got a lot of play. And you can hear a noise. So more than likely, that is probably our noise right there. No wiggle up and down, wiggle left and right. So that definitely looks like a steering issue. Just looking at that tire rod, it looks like that's the problem. See if you can see a tire there. See that wiggle? Well, there is our problem. So we're gonna tear that apart and look inside and see what's going on. Well, we've got our wheel off. We're gonna start spraying some penetrating oil in there. Uh, hopefully we can get in there without having to rent a tool, but if so, it is what it is. The part store does usually rent these, so we'll tear it apart and find out. Your outer tie rod bolt, uh, 13 16 does fit it. More than likely it is metric though, because 13 16 is very, very tight. Uh, when you run into a problem with that spinning, the easy solution, they did put a hex on top of there. 10 millimeter fits it perfectly. So that'll hold the stud while you loosen the nut up, make things a little bit easier. At least I thought that far ahead. And amazingly enough, the tie rod started dropping as we loosened up the nut. So it come out pretty easily. Uh, if it doesn't, you can smack this right here, the hammer. It will put vibrations through it to loosen up. Would not recommend smacking here because you're gonna mushroom that and then you're not gonna be able to get a socket back on there. Because more than likely when you go to put this back together, that's gonna try and spin, so you're gonna wanna hold that. Or you can use a ball joint uh, pickle fork. Uh, more than likely, it'll probably... Let's see how this thing goes. I think it's got a little metal sleeve over it. It does have a little metal sleeve over it. So you could use definitely a pickle fork, a uh, tie rod pickle fork, I guess, and uh, pop that out. But this one did come out pretty easy, so that's a good thing. But with that being loose, check that out. There's our play right there. So we're going to tear into the inside and see what we got to do to get it swapped out. Obviously, first, we got to pull this off. Pull this boot off, and then we should be able to see where it threads into the rack and pinion. All right, so we got our boot removed. Basically, all it is is this little spring clamp here. Take the tension off of that. There is a little clip on here. It'd probably be easier to remove that, definitely. Uh, there is a little bit of a lip on the rack and pinion. I was able to get it pulled off. I'm going to try and leave this on there to put back on because it does hold a lot better than the zip tie they supply you with. They do make a tool to replace these rings. You got to have the rings. They are convenient, but most of the time you get a zip tie sent with it but that is definitely a problem right there you can tell water's been getting in there and rusting it up and it's got lots of play so with the room we have to work in there i did have to go rent the tool holy bazookas batman that's not what i was expecting everything i've seen has been like a little crow's foot that goes on there but this thing looks like it's gonna be pretty sweet the only disadvantage you gotta take the outer tie rod off which ain't really a huge deal uh, but what i'm gonna do to try and kind of keep this thing in alignment best i can I'm going to get a measurement from there, probably to the end of that ball socket. Oh, and kind of set it right back where it was. Uh, they will need alignment after this, but we're going to try and get as close as we can. This is kind of the setup I've got as far as measuring it. I just used the tool to kind of get me out and over that boot. I got 14 and 8 to the end of the tie rod, so that should get us pretty close in the ballpark. So now we'll just loosen up our jam nut. Should be able to take our outer tie rod right off. And then we'll put our tool on there and hopefully remove it all easily. So here's kind of maybe an easy way to uh, help you get this stuff broken apart. I already do have it loose. 
Uh, I do have a bigger than usual adjustable wrench. Most people probably don't have anything this big, but if you do, just uh, put that on the tie rod, kind of like so, and put this end on the ground. That way you can get your wrench in here and loosen it. You're only kind of fighting one. You're only fighting really to hold one wrench. Um, if you don't have a wrench that big, most people don't. You can use two wrenches, obviously. That's kind of how it's designed to be done. But what you can do, set your wrenches in such an orientation. Probably want a little bit bigger wrench than this. But this is just what I have. But put them close together like that. So that way you can squeeze them together. I see so many people try and go like that and take stuff loose, and you're kind of just fighting yourself. So put them close together. You can use the hand, you can use the leverage out of your palm. It makes life a lot easier. So this tool is looking pretty sweet. Uh, it comes with a little C clip with some wings on it. You put it over the back side of your tie rod. It has a little lock that you slide over, kind of keep it all in place so it doesn't slip out. And the other end's got a half inch drive, so hopefully this will work out pretty good. Now these tie rods do have a red thread locker on them from the factory because they don't want them coming off. You know, kind of controls where your vehicle is steered. So, it may be a little tough to get it unthreaded at first. And the new ones come with thread sealant also, or thread locker. That was too bad. Well, there you have it. There's a little washer that goes in there too. Make note of that. And there you have your old junky worn out part. Oh, you know, dust flying out of thing. Yep, it's seen better days. So we'll get the new one put in and be about ready to be cruising this thing. So the new tie rod did come with another band. Uh, I'm gonna try and use the original one. It is on there and it's tight. If it goes good, we'll use it. If not, we'll use the new band. It's nice to have it if we need it. This washer here, I am not 100% sure on the orientation. It fell off as it came out. Uh, seeing as it's got a little metal side, I'm assuming that goes to the tie rod. This rubber side goes inside the rack and pinion. That is my best guess. Uh, I may be wrong on that. Just judging the looks at it, metal on metal, kind of seems like that's how they had it. Uh, showing by the wear marks. So that's how we're going to go on this one here. All right, go ahead and start your tie rod by hand. Uh, you don't want to start it in that tool because more likely it'll probably cross thread. This way you can be sure it threads up nicely. I got it just snugged. I'm about to put the tool back on there and tighten it down. All right, we got it all snugged up. I'm going to throw that boot on there while I got a little bit of room to work with and try and fit that in there. Here's where you may want to kind of remember your order of parts. Boot first, little retainer clip, lock and nut, tie rod. We got our new tie rod on. Got the little clip from the tool back on there. We got to measure back out here. So we are good. All right, so we got our boot back on. I did use the new retaining clip. Yeah, the old one was just fighting me, so I said, screw it. Uh, so far, the hardest part of this job really is getting that boot put back on. Uh, this little clip here tried fighting me, but it really wasn't too bad. So we got that all buttoned up and we're gonna get our nut on this side, start tightening it up and we'll be done. So we got our nut good and tight. We're just gonna do a visual on everything, make sure everything is put back in place and tight. Looks good. So now we just gotta throw the wheel on and we'll be done. Last but not least, while we got on the ground, go ahead and torque your lug nuts. You know, definitely wanna make sure your wheel's on there tight. So now we got it all back together. Uh, we did kind of set the alignment, but I would still definitely recommend taking it to an alignment shop. It'll save you in the long run. So there you have it. That's how you change the inner tie rod. On a 2015 Ford Taurus outer tie rod, you can use this video for the same. You kind of had to remove it to do the inner tie rod, so it's kind of a two for one deal. I might have some packages here. So, anyways, I'm gonna go see if I got some good mail. Uh, you guys hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. If you got any more questions on this thing, let me know. Uh, it does make a frequent appearance on the channel, apparently. So, just let me know. Appreciate it. What's the problem? <laughs>